I'm super excited to be here with you at Strata Singapore 2015. And um, you know, I'd just like to play a, a quick video to show you what we see from the lens of FusionX in terms of what big data analytics is all about. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you've seen in the video just a couple of moments ago, we live in a world that we're confronted with tons and tons of data. There's a plethora of different data types. As we're speaking, in the last 60 seconds alone, you would see that there are about 700,000 search queries taking place as we speak. There's about 600 over YouTube videos being uploaded, and the data is just growing exponentially. Now we see the digital data in the universe growing and doubling every two years, changing the way we work, we live, and also how we play. So let me put this question to the audience. And um, I can't see you today, but if I could get a raise of hands, perhaps we would have some nice gadgets and gifts that are given out today at our booth today, right? So what I'd like to ask is, which, as data grows today, which are the largest countries in the world by population? Can anybody tell me which is the largest country today? China, India, and yes, the whole landscape is changing. This is how the world sees the new order. You see China, you see India, you see Facebook, you see Tencent, WhatsApp, the United States, Google, Indonesia, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And many of you are familiar with this, that there's a convergence between the physical world and the digital world. It's something that we have to address whether we like it or not. So big data has really changed the world forever. But really, how fast is big data growing and how uh, is the world changing? Let's put things in the right perspective. The number of years where the radio industry took to reach 50 million users was 38 years. The TV industry took about 13 years to reach 50 million users. The internet, four years. iPod, four years. Now Facebook, somebody mentioned Facebook just a while ago. Facebook took nine months to reach 100 million users. When you do that and you compare that, it's really staggering and really astonishing. Now how many of us here have more than one connected device? You would have a tablet, a PC, a laptop, a mobile phone, Many of us have more than one connected device. But what we see is that today, we have close to 3 billion connected devices in the world. By 2020, we will have exceeded 30 billion connected devices. And that, again, is a staggering statistic. But one of the main challenges that we have, a conundrum that we face today, is that it's not about getting mobile phones and data generated as we speak but it's more about turning these massive data streams from a liability because it's storage is, uh, and data is stored over there. How do we turn it from a liability into strength? Now, wouldn't it be great if you had a crystal ball where you could play back historical events and understand what happened in the past, what were some of the symptoms, what were some of the data points to be able to predict what could happen. So that's what today's topic is all about. How do we find insights and also foresight to make better, well-informed decisions? So if we take a look at the Gartner Analytics 
value escalator. Gartner says that at the very left bottom of the screen, you see there is descriptive analytics. Now that really tells us what happened, as in how was your sales historically? How was um, you know, your revenue? What were your profits like historically? Were there any downtime? What happened in the past? But as you move towards the right, you see diagnostic analytics. When there's a dip in sales, when there's an increase in revenue, when there's a certain downtime that happens in your manufacturing plant, why did it happen? You then identify certain symptoms and certain reasons and factors that resulted in a certain event happening. But as you move further to the right, you then have predictive analytics to be able to use historical data to make sense out of it so that when you see similar symptoms and signs happening, you could predict what could happen. And then as we move towards the far end, to the right, you then have prescriptive analytics. You then can prescribe and make recommended actionable items to say what could we do to avoid a certain disaster, or what could we do to increase revenue, or what could we do to make the world a better place. So as you see, as we move from left to right, from hindsight to insight to foresight, the difficulty increases but correspondingly, the value increases as you move from descriptive analytics all the way to predictive and prescriptive analytics. That is the holy grail that is nirvana, if you're able to have foresight, to be able to say that if I simulate this, if I do what-if analysis, this would be a good decision. Now, needless to say that none of us have a crystal ball, but everything can start with a question. And there are many examples of applications that we've, we've used in big data analytics, ranging from smarter healthcare where you have um, wearable devices, where you have education, where you have finance, log analysis, using CCTV and image analytics, video analytics, to really have ways to prevent crime or mitigate that. Traffic control, we talked about using weather forecasts to then divert taxis and transportation to certain locations if we know it's going to rain tomorrow. And of course, trading analytics, manufacturing, so on and so forth, churning, and many of these things. But today, I'm not going to go through all these. What I'm going to go through are some real case studies that are close to hand. And this starts off with a question and also with something that really happened. So I'd like to share this story with you. About 15 months ago, a friend of mine, let's call him Joe, that's not his real name. He came to me and told me that his son is brilliant. Straight A students, let's call his son Tim. Tim is not his real name. Straight A students all the way, primary school, secondary school, high school. So he sent his son overseas to a Western country to pursue his tertiary education. The first year that he pursued his education, he had straight A's again. The second year, things got a bit tougher. And then one day when he sat for his first paper for the exams, the son felt that he couldn't answer the questions. He walked out of the examination hall, and day two, day three, he didn't turn up. Day four, guess what happened to this young man? They couldn't find him. The lecturers, professors couldn't locate him. He was a brilliant student. They then found him in his hostel, and he had hung himself. This is a real story by a friend that where a brilliant student, straight A's, had committed suicide. Second story, two months later, another friend of mine said that he has a daughter. This is a specialist, a surgeon. He's a heart surgeon, and he has a daughter who wanted to be like him, to be a doctor that was reputable to save people. Now, she had a situation where she was also sent overseas to study, and she couldn't cope with that. There was societal pressure. She couldn't adapt to society. And what happened was she was there, and her appearance started to change. She was a little bit plump. And again, one fine day, people found her in her hostel with an overdose of sleeping pills, and she had passed away as well. These are real-life stories that have happened. So that triggered us at FusionX to say that we wanted to do something which we call analytics on students, the youth, the younger generation. So what have we done? We have seen that suicide trends are a real problem. Yes, they're taboo. In countries like China, you have many of these. We wanted to see how we could move this forward. But you see, 
staggering statistics, 14,000 students committing suicide. You see lots of problems like health problems, drug abuse, and sometimes obesity, appearance, self-esteem, all relating to problems. These are all problems that we face, depression, so on and so forth. And of course, moving forward to something a little bit more positive, in students, we can also use analytics to understand what happened, why it happened, and also forecast and predict what could happen so that we can avoid these things from happening, and even identifying talent. Some schools that we work with say that, could you identify talent and identify the next Mark Zuckerberg? So we've done that on analytics to identify talent as well. And analytics on students and health and safety, where you have wearable devices that you could bring together to, again, find out whether they're within the perimeters of the school and try to avoid that as well. So many of these things give us a more accurate picture in terms of who and what's happening in terms of um, what's happening in schools, but it can be used as a wide range of uh, applications. Now, to keep the long story short, I know I'm running out of time, what we've seen is that if we can use analytics and ask the right questions, start somewhere, it would be like the matrix where you can see within the lines, you can see the digital ones and O's, and you can see things much more clearly. So what I would like to say is that there are miracles that can happen. We don't have a crystal ball today, but there's a lot of potential in the data that we have. It's exploding, but if we start with just a question, with the right mission, and if we believe that we can do this, all of us can work together to make the world a better place, make it a smarter city, a smarter nation, a smarter region, and a smarter planet.